I would like to go through these five languages of love and see how our Prophet وسلم, as always was ahead of the game, subhanAllah. So the first language of love, the first love language, if you will, is words of affirmation. Words of affirmation. In order to be, to start the process of falling in love with someone or to fall in love with someone, you need to express your love to someone. You need to tell them, I love you, I appreciate you, I need you, I want you. This is uh, one way of, uh, this is the first step in falling in love or the first language of love, if you will. And we know the story of our Prophet Muhammad وسلم, where he was standing with a companion and they were conversing, they were talking, and then another companion walked by. Another companion walked by. And the companion that was talking to the Prophet وسلم, said to the Prophet وسلم, he said, Ya Rasulullah, I love that man. I love that man. And the Prophet وسلم, said to him, have you told him? Have you told him that you love him? And the companion responded, no, I haven't. And so the Prophet وسلم, said, go tell him. Go tell him that you love him. So our Prophet وسلم, was encouraging the spreading of telling each other of words of affirmation. He was spreading, encouraging us to have words of affirmation with each other. We also know in the hadith on the authority of Abu Huraira, where the Prophet ﷺ said, a good word is a charitable act. A good word is a charitable act. You can get a good deed for saying, I love you to someone, for having words of affirmation with each other. SubhanAllah. The second language of love, number two, the second language of love, they say, is, the experts say, it's quality time. It's quality time. In order to start to fall in love with someone, you need to spend time with them. You need to be in their presence. You need to feel their hal, their energy. You need to converse with them, right? You need to be with them close. So this is the second language of love. And we know from the shamal of the Prophet ﷺ that he gave everybody quality time. He was one of the most busiest people ever, but he always gave people time. All of the Sahaba felt that he would give them special time. We know that when he shook somebody's hand, the Prophet ﷺ was never the first to let go. When he shook somebody's hand, he was never the first to let go, subhanAllah. He's a busy man. You would expect, the Prophet ﷺ was a busy man, you would expect him to be in a rush to move on to the next thing, but he would never be the one to, to, be, to be the first to let go, subhanAllah. SubhanAllah. The third language of love is receiving gifts. Receiving gifts. Uh, in order to fall in love with somebody, you give them gifts and you receive gifts from them, and this brings people close. This is what the experts say. The Prophet ﷺ said in hadith, on the authority of Abu Huraira, that give each other gifts and you will love each other. Give each other gifts and you will love each other. SubhanAllah. The Prophet ﷺ, so many years ago, was already giving us this advice to give each other gifts, to bring the hearts closer together, and to instill love. The fourth language of love is acts of service. Is acts of service. Doing something for someone. Being there for someone. Knowing that if someone has a hard time with a certain thing and you're good at it, that you take care of it for them. The Prophet ﷺ said in authentic hadith, As-Sayyidu Rijali Khadimahum. The master of the people is their servant. The master of the people is their servant. Again, encouraging us to, to serve, to be in the service of our brothers and sisters, to be in the service of the Ummah. And lastly, the last language of love is physical touch. After you've gone through the first four languages, finally you reach this point of physical touch, of being close to somebody physically, being with them, hugging them, holding them. And we know from the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, we know that all of his wives, but especially uh, Aisha radiallahu anha, uh, talked about how the Prophet ﷺ was close to her physically. When the Prophet ﷺ, uh, when, when the, uh, at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, there were some people, uh, some performers that came from out of town. And Aisha radiallahu anha wanted to go see them. And so when the Prophet, ﷺ, the Prophet ﷺ said, okay, let's go. And he took her to go watch these performers. And uh, she narrates that she... Uh, the Prophet ﷺ was standing there, was sitting, and she was standing, and she put her chin and her cheek next to the Prophet ﷺ, and they were cheek to cheek, to cheek, cheek to cheek, and they were close to each other. Subhanallah. So we just went through the five love languages, the five languages of love, and we explained how the Prophet ﷺ encouraged these language, these love languages ahead of ahead of this, ahead of his time, as usual, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But there is another way that these languages of, of love 
are connected to us. There's another way that these languages of love are connected to our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These love languages are directly connected to the five pillars of Islam. They're directly connected to the five pillars of Islam. SubhanAllah, these experts have laid out what needs to be done in order to fall in love. And we see that in the five pillars of Islam, these are connected. Essentially, we can think of the five pillars of Islam as what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to do in order to have a relationship with Him. In order to have a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we need to fulfill the five pillars of Islam. So what's the first pillar of Islam? The first pillar of Islam is the testimony of faith. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna Muhammad rasulullah There is no God except God and that Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, is his last and final messenger. This is the first pillar of Islam. The first language of love was words of affirmation. SubhanAllah. SubhanAllah. Amazing. In the first pillar of Islam, you are affirming with your words, your belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The second, the second pillar of Islam is the five daily prayers. What is the five daily prayers? Quality time. It's quality time with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the second language of love was quality time. Before the, pandem the, before the pandemic, when many of us were working in person and we were working in, uh, in the office and you had meetings back to back and you had a hectic schedule, it didn't matter. You had to find that corner in the office and you had to pray your doher namaz and you had to give that time to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You had to give that quality time to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the second uh, pillar of Islam and how it is connected to the second language of love. The third language of love, or the third pillar of Islam is fasting. The third pillar of Islam is fasting. The third love language is acts of service. Fasting is the ultimate act of service. Fasting is the ultimate act of service, subhanAllah. You're giving away, you're staying away from the halal even just because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told you to do so. This is the highest form of service, subhanAllah. And then the fourth, <clears throat> the, uh, the fourth pillar of Islam is zakat. The fourth pillar of Islam is zakat. The fourth language of love was receiving gifts. We know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot receive gifts, gifts from us physically. No one is saying that. But when you're giving zakat, you're giving a gift to the ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You're giving an, uh, a gift to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's nation to help them, to help those that are less fortunate than you with your financial ability, subhanAllah. And then lastly, the last pillar of Islam is Hajj. The last pillar of Islam is Hajj. And the last language of love is physical touch. Hajj, brothers and sisters, is a physical journey we must, we must take. Nobody is saying that you can astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, touch Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or something like that. Astaghfirullah, that's not what we're saying here. But Hajj is a physical journey. You can't do Hajj in Pleasanton, California. You can't do Hajj here. You have to go to modern day Saudi Arabia and you have to do tawaf around the Kaaba and you have to run between Safa and Marwa and you have to, etc., etc. It's physical. You have to do the physical part. SubhanAllah. So this is how the five languages of love are directly tied to the five pillars of Islam. And the five pillars of Islam are what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking us to do in order to have a proper relationship with Him. So brothers and sisters, let's change 